Hi, this is Mick Press now, and this is a tutorial on the square of opposition and direct inferences in Aristotle's logic. In this tutorial, we'll review propositional quality and quantity, we'll look at the square of opposition, we'll look at contradiction, and we'll look at the relationships between co contraries and subcontraries. Remember from the previous tutorial that the application of Aristotle's system of logic requires that we start with propositions in one of four standard forms. The four types are all SRP, some SRP, no SRP, and some S are not P. For convenience, a letter abbreviation is used to refer to each of the four types, A, E, I, and O. Each of the four types has a unique combination of the characteristics of qual quality and quantity. Standard propositions or standard claims are one of two qualities, either affirmative or negative. A proposition is affirmative when it says that it says what is included in a category. A claim is negative when it says what is excluded from a category. The A and I claims are the affirmative standard propositions and the E and O claims are the negative standard propositions. Standard propositions are one of two quantities, either universal or particular. A universal claim says something about all members of a category. A particular claim says something about only some of the members of a category. The A and E claims are the universal claims, and the I and O claims are the particular claims. These characteristics can be visualized in a table with two rows and two columns. The affirmative propositions are in the top row, and the negative propositions are in the second row. Universal propositions are in the first column, and particular propositions are in the second column. The square of opposition is also a way to visually display the relationships among the four types of claims. Here is the square with the relationships between claims labeled. A and E are contraries, and at the bottom of the square I and O are subcontraries. A and I are subalterns, and so are E and O. The terms that are di diagonal to one another are called contradictories. The important point isn't just learning the name of these relationships, but understanding what we can infer about other claims if we know the truth value of one of them. Suppose I make the claim all swans are white is true, but then you discover a black swan. They do actually exist. You have found a contradiction to my A claim. If the O claim, some swans are not white, is true, then my A claim, some swans are white, must be false. Sometimes this is referred to as refuting an argument by counterexample. Likewise, if the claim, all swans are white, is true, then the O claim, some swans are not white, is necessarily false. They are contradictories. Likewise, the E and I claims always have the opposite truth values. Contradiction is one of the most fundamental relationships in categorical logic. If you know the truth value of any of the four claims, you can automatically infer the truth value of its contradictory. Such inferences are called direct or immediate inferences because you can go straight from the truth value of one claim to, in this case, its contradictory claim with no further premises. Contradictories always have the opposite truth value. They are the diagonals across the square of opposition. Now let's look at the relationship of contraries. If all SRP is true, then no SRP is necessarily false. This is easy to see. If the A claim all trees are plants with leaves is true, then the E claim no trees are plants with leaves must be false. This is always the case. Contraries cannot both be true. If you know that one contrary is true, you can infer that the other is false. What if all trees are plants with leaves is false? Do we know that no trees are plants with leaves is true? No, it may be that some trees are plants with leaves is true. In that case, that would make its contradictory, no trees are plants with leaves false. So contraries could both be false. That means if you start by knowing that one of the contraries is false, you still can't infer the truth value of its contrary.
you can always infer that the contradictory claims have the opposite truth values. What about subcontraries? If some trees are plants with leaves is true, does it necessarily follow that some trees are not plants with leaves is false? No, both could be true. So subcontraries can both be true, which means if you know that one is true, the other subcontrary is still undecided. But what if we start with a false subcontrary? If some trees are plants with leaves is false, does it necessarily follow that some trees are not plants with leaves is true? Yes, it does. Subcontraries cannot be both false, which means that if you know that one is false, the other subcontrary must be true. Here's the square of opposition again. Across the top, contraries can both be false but both cannot be true. On the bottom of the square, subcontraries can both be true, but both cannot be false. The relationship between subalterns isn't quite so simple. As we'll see in Aristotle's system of logic, you can infer an I claim from an A claim and an O claim from an E claim. But this is not the case in modern logic, also called Boolean logic. The reason for this difference will be the subject of another tutorial.